All right, man, peace. You know, the morning news, they had a they had a good little feature, a uh, very revelatory feature about the origins of man and certain archaeological or paleontolo paleontological findings that they've made recently. So I said, you know what, let me do a video about this. The origins of man have always been a mystery. No, they actually, they haven't been a mystery at all. All right. The origins of man have been laid out. They were laid out a long time ago in the scriptures. Um, but the reason why they like to promote this man came from ape philosophy, really it's a religion known as evolution. It's not scientifically based at all. The reason why they like to lay this out in this manner is to try to uh, invalidate the version of the of, of mankind's origin from the scriptures. They want to disavow any relationship with a higher power all right so they'd rather have you think that you came from apes than that you came fully formed from a an, an omnipotent omniscient being all right but i'll go more and more into this as we go along but this week we uncovered a major clue that changes the way we think about our early ancestors Archaeologists announced they had unearthed the oldest Homo sapien remains ever discovered. Analysis reveals the fossils date back about 315,000 years, making them more than 100,000 years older than those previously thought to be the oldest. So, <laughs> now this is what they're saying. And look, I've already stated I don't believe in, in conventional dating methods. I believe most of it's bullshit. But just to show you how incompetent most of these people are and how irrelevant most of what you get taught is. Now they have to change a timeline by 100,000 years based off of these new findings. All right. Of a fully formed human. All right. For those of y'all who don't know, basically. Um, in the conventional what's taught in the evolutionary model for the origins of mankind, they have they have what's called a. Uh, how, how do you pronounce this again? The Australopithecus, which is supposedly mankind's original ancestor. He's uh, this entity. Australopithecus is the um, the creature that first, you know, is 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 mankind's ancestor who evolved into man. Uh, Australopithecus has been proven to just have been a uh, prehistoric ape. That's all. That's all it was. All right. You brothers should look up hoax, evolutionary hoaxes like uh, Nebraska man and Pilt Down man, P-I-L-T-D-O-W-N man. All right. Where they took uh, ape jawbones and filed them down and dyed them to make them look like an ancient man. Or where they took a pig tooth and put it on a, a, a skull fragment of a man and, and tried to make try to fool people into thinking that that was some form of ancient man. All right. That's what you brothers should do. Some of y'all who believe in that in that evolutionary bullshit. All right. Now you have other, and no, 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 I believe in other words, Homo habilis, H A B I L I S. Another entity that was found to have been an ape. All right. It's just an ape. There have been over six thousand uh, ape uh, species that have existed. Since the formation of the world, there's well over, I think, over well over a hundred today. Uh, pardon me, there's well over a hundred ape and monkey species today, and uh, I believe that they classify four or five ape species. I believe gorillas, uh, chimps, orangutans, and bonobos. If I if I leave one out, one of you brothers can correct me. But all this shit is made up. Homo erectus and Homo sapiens have been found to just have been fully formed humans. The difference between Homo erectus and Homo sapiens, like the difference between a, uh, a Sudanese so-called African and an Asian man. All right. But anyway. The history altering fossils were found on a hillside in the Moroccan desert. And when I say that, I mean that those were ancient races. All right. They tried. They're trying to organize them into a chronological order. To make you think that to make to promote this evolutionary bullshit, and all those were were ancient races of man. Researchers recovered skull fragments, teeth, and other bones from five individuals, along with stone tools and evidence of fire usage. 
The discovery reveals that the bone structure of these early humans' faces are not much different from ours. Ding. Because they were fully formed humans. Hello. <laughs> to me, it's quite striking is that the reason why we connect these people to us is their face, the way they look. So it's people we would recognize like us if we would cross them in the street. The fossils also change the way we think about where early humans developed. No, they change, they change what you think about what ancient humans were and where they developed. I already knew that, that shit about uh, Ethiopia. That was bullshit. The reason why they pushed that in, in that region is to venerate Nimrod. All right? Because Kush and Nimrod, they were the progenitors of the people known as uh, Ethiopians. And in the ancient world, Ethiopian just meant um, so-called black African from, you know, that region. All right? Rooted in that region. They were known as Kushites. All right? That's why they promote that, that philosophy. That's, that's an indirect way for the quote-unquote Illuminists or Luciferians to venerate Nimrod and Kush because those are the forefathers of that philosophy known as Luciferianism. All right? But anybody knows that the original man did not come from that region. But they were discovered on the western edge of the African continent, thousands of miles away from the so-called Cradle of Humanity in Ethiopia, the site where the former oldest human remains were unearthed. Yeah, a bunch of bullshit um, from the Leakies, right? Richard Leakey and those people, they, 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 a bunch of hucksters getting over on people, bullshitting them. All right. But brothers, e evolution is not a real thing. I mean, that, that was a philosophy that was concocted by Charles Darwin uh, at the behest of his grandfather, I believe it was, Erasmus Darwin. All right. This is something that they made up in their head and tried to prove, and they're still trying to prove it today because they're humanist, they're atheist, all right? And they polluted a lot of you uh, so-called black men with that bullshit, all right? Brothers, according to the laws of physics, it is impossible for the universe to have been created other than by an omniscient force. It is impossible. When you understand uh, how the universe functions, when you understand the human body and how the human body functions, all these things were created a according to a plan. All right. There's something called the Cambrian period. You brothers should look this up. It's called the Cambrian period. Spelled C as in Charlie, A, M as in Michael, B as in boy, R, I, A as in Apple, N as in Nancy, period. This is the period where all creatures have been found fully formed. All right. Even uh, paleontologists will tell you it's unbelievable when they look at the Cambrian period, it's like somebody pulled back a curtain. These are the words that certain paleontologists have used to describe the fossils that they have found in this period. Right? There are no intermediary fossils that have been found for any animals whatsoever. Right? These are ancient species that have died off. Like the so-called white man, they're always trying to save certain species from dying off. The Most High kills off certain species so that he can introduce new ones every day. Every day species die off. All right. You're not supposed to be trying to stop species from dying off. You let them die off so that they can be replaced. OK, not evolve, but be replaced. That is the difference. Challenging another fundamental idea that our species evolved in just one location. You know, it's yeah, the, the, the species didn't evolve at all. All right. I mean, this is how stupid they are. They just found skeletons showing that mankind was fully formed and they're still trying to run with this evolutionary bullshit. You know, brothers, there was there, there was a, an animal called the Archaeopteryx. The Archaeopteryx is an animal that a lot of evolutionists tried to use to prove that birds uh, evolved from reptiles. You know what they found with the Archaeopteryx? That it actually was just a prehistoric bird. That's all it was. Because scales cannot quote-unquote evolve into feathers feathers are totally disparate from scales that's why you still have animals with scales today and you have animals with feathers they are two totally different creatures any ornithologist will tell you that an ornithologist is basically a scientist of birds all right the archaeopteryx was basically a bird that had claws on its wings and it had teeth in its mouth now there are no birds today with teeth in its mouth 
but prehistorically there were many birds that had teeth in their mouth and there are birds today that have claws on their wings all right i believe one is the uh is the hotzin spelled h-o-a-t-z-i-n another one i believe is called the toraco i can't remember how it's spelled though i believe it's t-o-u-r-a-c-o but you brothers can look that up all right there's still birds today that have claws on their wings. There's no such thing as evolution. To prove evolution, you have to find intermediary species at every level going down uh, chronologically. All right? Look up something called the Tuatara lizard. T-U-A-T-A-R-A. -A -A, or the, um, uh, damn, what's the name of that damn fish? Coal, the the, the uh, Coalacanth. C-O-E-L, I believe it's E-C-A-N-T-H. These are animals that they that they found in certain uh, geological strata that they tried to say were prehistoric animals that eventually evolved into fish and lizards today. And they actually found them still alive today. All right. Brothers, I mean, that's just so much, man. There's so much proof that a lot of that stuff is just bullshit. I mean, it's it's it's, it's a joke. Like even when you go into things like. um like biogenetics, right? When you study the, the human cell, um, biogeneticists will tell you that it's, that it's impossible for evolution to have occurred. When you just look at the functionality of a cell, when you study things like the organelles or what they call the nucleotides, right? The nucleic acids, DNA, RNA, all right? Basically, uh, DNA is comprised of four, of, uh, four components. I, I can't remember. They use letters to represent them. I think it's A, C, T, and G. But one of you brothers can correct me. Y'all can look it up. All right. There's basically f uh, a thousand uh, nucleotides in a DNA strand that are uh, comprised of those four different um, nucleotides. Right. Or nucleic acid components. And they fit together harmoniously to function. This, this is not something that can have occurred through evolution, which basically means happenstance. That's what evolution is code word for, basically, happenstance. All right? When you study how, it's, how, how life functions, all right, life comes to the fore from the creation of proteins from amino acids coming together. Okay? And the amino acids have to come together in an, in an exact sequence in order to create life. Now, beyond that, they have to combine in what's called left-handed uh, amino acids because right-handed amino acids will not combine together. And then you have something called pe a peptide bond. You know, brothers, I'm not going to go too much in into, the, into it on this topic. Um, you brothers can look a lot of that stuff up. But biogeneticists have already found and mathematicians have already found that the chances of, of processes that complex to have happened by happenstance, which is all evolution is, is basically 10 to the 950th power. All right. There's a mathematician out in England. I can't remember her exact name. First name is Chandra. C-H-A-N-D-R-A. -A, and she got a long ass last name. I think it's an East Indian, like L Lava Singham or some shit like that. I can't remember her name. She said it is impossible, mathematically impossible for evolution to be a viable method for life creation all right life had to have been created by an on by an omnipotent force mathematically because anything beyond 10 to the 10 to the 50th power is considered impossible okay mathematically impossible the laws of physics the first and second law of thermodynamics nullify evolution right the laws of phys the laws of thermodynamics uh basically state that energy is not created it's just it's just transferred and that number two that energy doesn't um it doesn't uh go up it decays over time all right everything decays over time so in other words the things that were created in the uh ancient world in the prehistoric world were actually of greater size greater stature and that's why you have stories about things like giants giant humans and giant serpents right the everything declines over time brothers Right. The saber toothed tiger was bigger than the, than the tigers today. The woolly mammoth was greater and bigger than the elephants today. Man, ancient man, like truly ancient man. Was larger than men today. I'm not talking about a lot of these skeletons that they're digging up now. I'm talking about the skeletons that they hide from the public that the Smithsonian won't show you. 
things of that nature. All right. It's mathematically impossible, according to the laws of physics, for anything to have occurred by happenstance. All right, as I've stated, they've already done the mathematical equations on this, but they just won't show you those things. All right. But, and, you know, Charles Darwin was on record as saying that, you know, he, he had no explanation for the intricate designs of things like the eye and uh, bird feathers and, you know, the workings of the inner ear. All right. Things that evolutionists cannot explain in regards to how the, the inner ear of a you know of a serpent or of a crocodile could be converted to the inner ear of a bird which has a total totally different functionality all right like i was mentioning about the the uh, archaeopteryx bird you know th at first they tried to say that this is an evolutionary link between reptiles and birds because it doesn't have a what you know what they call a breastplate or the or the sternum muscle which is what all birds use to fly and then they found archaeopteryx that had it all right a lot of these people are giving you bullshit half-assed information to promote uh evolution right like they'll look at uh, uh they'll look at people and they'll say well how come uh people have what they call vestigial origin uh vestigial organs like you know your um a so-called appendix or tonsils or the cossack bone on your or what they call your tailbone um all those things have been found to actually have a real functionality all right all of those organs have been found to have a real functionality. The, 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 your tonsils, your appendix have been found to have, you know, to, to be essential in fending off uh, infection. You know, the caustic bone on, on your tailbone have been, has been found to, uh, to be connected to uh, muscles on your waist and on your hips to bring stability to your body. You know, the way that apes move around as, as quadrupeds, they, are, they were perfectly created to ascend trees that's why they walk hunched over it's already been proven that the hip structure of an ape could not possibly have evolved into the upright what they call bipedal um, structure of a man all right a lot of you brothers who believe in this evolutionary bullshit y'all gotta let that stuff go man but i, I know why i know why y'all do it for it y'all number one y'all want to sound smart uh you want to sound like the so-called caucasian you want to sound up to date and you really want to come against the most high. All right. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to I'm not going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Ain't nobody going to tell me I come from no goddamn ape. All right. I know. I know I'm fully formed. I don't know about you, brothers, but, you know, <laughs> I know I'm fully formed. Like I said, according to the laws of thermodynamics, we're actually devolving, not evolving. All right. Physiologically, everything is devolving. That's why the so-called white man today, he cannot explain why, how the pyramids were built or how Stonehenge was built or how uh, a lot of what they call the megalithic structures were built. Not only um, as far as structurally, they don't understand it mathematically. They don't understand it architecturally. How could people have designed this? They, they, they cannot fathom it. All right. There's certain chemical things that they don't comprehend today, like like the Byzantine, what they call the Greek fire. Right, which was fire, which was a, 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 a method of warfare that was used to create fire that could even keep going when it was put on water. Right, like th there's all type of shit that that they do they do not understand today. But all that evolutionary shit is nonsense. They've been known, and I've, like I've already said, they've been known to find fossils at a um, geological strata, then not find it on the strata above, and then find it again on the strata above that. All right. According to evolution, as they dig deeper, they should find older and older fossils, right, to complement their so-called evolutionary philosophy. But that's not that's not how they find it. All right. All that all like I said, all that bullshit Australopithecus. Those are all apes. They're not men. All right. But anyway, brothers, peace.